All right, friends, as prefaced at the onset of this maiden voyage of 2022 of the Spicer Speaking Podcast, the big week is nearly upon us. The 63rd annual playing as a PGA Tour event of the American Express, here to assess, deduce, predict, educate, inform, is the right man. He's been covering this event and many, many others for the Desert Sun since back in 1986. Welcome back to the program, our guy, Larry Bohannon. Larry, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year to you, and uh, happy to be back covering uh, uh, the American Express. Uh, this will be my 36th year covering it. And I'm uh, very glad to see that we'll be back with uh, concerts and with fans this year. Those are a couple of the things that uh, we're looking at, and we will certainly discuss um, after what happened last year. Obviously, the tournament was able to be played, although several health and safety concessions made along the way. Moreover, we don't want to bury the lead, man. Um, I think this is my 12th year covering the event, so I've got some catching up to do uh, for you. but. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a number of years following this thing, covering this thing, and I don't know if I've ever seen a field quite this enticing. I'm just yeah. going to preface one more thing. I think it was a couple weeks ago, the media day, three weeks ago, something like that, when you and I played uh, together, along with uh, Todd Leonard, of course, had ourselves a fine time on the stadium, and there were but few player announcements made on that day. Obviously, uh, as mentioned on this program, Tony Finau, uh, he joined via Zoom or some sure. video effect. And there were a couple other announcements, obviously tournament host Phil Mickelson. Scotty Scheffler was among those announcements. I feel like there's somebody else that I'm perhaps- Siwoo Kim, the defending champion. The defending champion, thank yeah. you, Siwoo Kim. But I remember saying to you during our round subsequent, if almost verbatim, I was like, you know, man, they didn't really announce, I mean, those are great names, but they didn't like lay out a full field of here are 10, 12, 15 guys, even if they were past champions. The weeks since, however, have been pretty electric, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I, th I think they knew that some of these guys were going to come to the tournament this year, but you can't say that until there's an official commitment through the PGA Tour. Uh, they felt all along that John Rahm, the number one player in the world, past winner here uh, in 2018, was going to be in the field. He had planned on being in the field last year and had to kind of pull out with a little bit of a tweak to a muscle uh, the week of the tournament at the uh, at a gym. Uh, so they felt that he was going to be here all along. Uh, they felt that Patrick Cantlay was going to be in the field. You know, he finished second last year. Saw that electrifying 61 on the stadium course on Sunday. Uh, and so they always felt that he was going to come back. Uh, and then, uh, you know, some names that have played here before, but have become bigger names uh, as, as their careers have gone on. Uh, Cantlay is certainly one of those names, yeah. but uh, Abraham Answer, uh, who's, uh, here's your trivia question for the day, who's the only player to finish in the top five in this tournament the last two years? The Ab answer is Abraham Answer. Uh, so he's in the field, uh, you know, you've got Jason Day coming to the event for the first time, uh, former, uh, uh, major championship winner, uh, Justin Rose is back in the field for the first time in a couple of years. Uh, so there's, it's, it's, it's actually a very good field for Jessica Molinari, another major champion who almost won, uh, a British Open and then should have won maybe the Masters the next right. year. Some guy named Woods won it instead. But uh, so there's a lot of very good appealing players in this field this year. And as of this moment, as we're talking, there are 13 of the top 50 players in the world. And for a regular PGA Tour event, uh, with a few exceptions, 13 out of 50 is pretty good. That's a metric that uh, I'm following your coverage on an annual basis that I think excites you. That is one that seemed to yeah. qualify for you as 
this is a good field. This is a great field. This is kind of a blah type field. You like having those guys in the top 50. I know Siebel Kim is right on the verge of that too. Yeah, I think it's a measure of how good the field is now. Uh, you could have, well, Davis Love is in the field this year, Davis Love the third. Um, he's going to be the president's cup captain, so he may play a little bit more this year to get to know some of the guys a little better, talk to some of the guys. Um, I don't know that anybody's excited about Davis Love being in the field now. <laughs> he would have been excited 15 years ago when he was a top 50 player, a top 20 player. A top 10 player, really. So I think uh, top 50 is a good measure of how hot your field is now, as opposed to what it was like a year ago or five years ago. A few other names that have uh, yet to mention. Of course, SoCal native Ricky Fowler is in the field. That's always good, yeah. uh, let's face it, uh, for the fans and name recognition. Uh, Rising Stead, uh, Rill, uh, Will Zalatoris, rather, is in the field. And just within hours uh, preceding this chat, a couple other really cool names. I, I like the depth that's also coming together. Uh, Matthew Wolf, SoCal guy, and another California right. guy, Cameron Champ. He won uh, at the 3M last year. I think he has uh, two PGA Tour wins to his name. So along with the stars and with the highlights, to use the word again, I like the depth because if a guy, you know, it's it's getting to to be one of those fields where if Matthew Wolf won, would he be the favorite? No, but would you be shocked if he won? No, no, no of course not. Uh, you know, I I think this tournament kind of goes up and down. Sometimes you get these winners who are about 120th on the money list. See, Wu Kim was that way last year, but you can't look at See Wu Kim and say, well, what's he doing winning here? It won the Players Championship already, um, and I think that there are. Uh, winners like John Rahm, who we knew, <laughs> let's be honest, we knew he was going to be a great player. And then you've got the Adam Long and Hudson Swafford type of winners who are a little bit of surprise, but are legitimate top 125 guys. And the depth on the PGA Tour now is so deep, so strong, that anybody who's in a field can't really be surprised. Uh, you certainly would love to have you know, Sunday roll around and have Cantlay and Rom and maybe Mickelson uh, in a field, you know, in the top uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, but again, Matthew Wolf, Cameron Champ would certainly be one of those guys. Yeah. Uh, Will Zalatoris is the rookie of the year uh, this last year. Uh, Scotty Scheffler has got to win a tournament at some point. Totally. He's, he's so good. Uh, Ryder Cup player this year, as a matter of fact. So uh, the depth is very, 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 very good. And for me, speaking of the metrics, I mean, mentioning the Ryder Cup and the international teams, that's one that always kind of blows my hair back is how many President's Cup guys, American or international, how many Ryder Cup guys do you have in the not too distant Ryder Cup past that are in your field? Uh, that, you know, it's a, it's a global game now more than ever and that means that you have a global field and yeah, we have I mean, that we have a lot of members of both teams yes and i think you know the lpj gets a lot of credit for being a global tour but the truth of the matter is if you're good as a male player anywhere in the world you're trying to get the pga tour and you want to be here to uh, to play against the best on a week in week out basis uh again Francesco Molinari uh, has kind of been on and off here, but he's played here actually quite a bit over the last 10 years. Uh, and so, you know, he's a good example of Abraham Answer, Mexican star. Uh, okay, he's born in Texas, but, uh, you know, I, there, he would be a member of a President's Cup team, not, not the U.S. team, right. but the international team. Uh, Canadian players, Australian players, they're all, they're all around the world. And of course, the number one player in the world, even though we all think of him as being from Arizona State, <laughs> he, he's, he's from Spain. And he splits time and plays both on the uh, PGA Tour and the European Tour. Um, not to cut you off, but uh, let's, let's stick with Rom for a second. Uh, obviously, he's played in this tournament. 
uh, I want to call it three times. Uh, he's had great success back in 2017, when I think was technically his rookie year still, believe it or not. I mean, that's still how young he is. Yeah. Uh, tied for 34th in his uh, debut in the event. Won uh, the next time around in a playoff over future champion Andrew Landry. Right. And then four, came back. Four holes. In, in four holes. Um, and then came back the next year and finished solo sixth i mean it's kind of lame or lazy or whatever to pick the chalk to win your tournament but there's absolutely no reason to pick against john john rom coming back this year and winning this thing and as an aside what we saw from him last week after basically being on the couch or whatever he was doing since the Ryder cup hadn't played since the Ryder cup went out and didn't win the tournament, but set a, a PGA to a record for the second best cumulative score ever in the century tournament of champions, obviously losing to, uh, to Cameron Smith. But if he can do that, what do you think he's going to have now another week off and then come back out here? I think he's going to light it up, man. Yeah. I think, you know, he's one of several players who have talked about uh, at the end of the Ryder cup or the end of that cycle into September and the, FedEx Cup and all that stuff, that they just needed some time away. You know, the last couple of years have been pretty tough on guys. I know. Let's not be too sorry let's, about let's guys winning them. seven, eight million dollars a year <laughs> playing golf. But you know, they've had to deal with probably more protocols and more testing and uh, COVID-related things than almost anybody else. Athletes have done that more than us as general people. Uh, and they just took a lot of time off. Patrick Cantley talked about that as well. And then to sh see them show up first time out of the gate in 2022 and have Ron play so well and have Cantley pl play, play pretty right. well as well. Uh, you, you go, wow, what are they going to do on these golf courses? Now, admittedly, they didn't have much wind <laughs> in Hawaii, which is a surprise. And the greens were a little soft because they had had some uh, some rains, but uh, hopefully we won't have any rain here, and the greens will not be soft, and they'll be firm and perfect. And the scoring is low here anyway, so we're going to see some uh, some lights out scoring, I'm sure. I'm kind of anticipating that as well. Uh, we can talk about the names in the field for several hours, and we definitely will in person next week but one other that i want to mention only because you and i have talked about this over the years i want to talk about jason day for just a minute in that he has a local connection uh he is yes. uh, wintered out here i believe he's not a member at the vintage club for for a long time uh, i've seen him over at the vintage club uh, there have been sightings of jason day a little bit younger jason day in the winter season over at cod at the COD driving range, literally sitting on the grass with his wife and his child. So he's been out here. The dude's been out here for a long time, hanging around the desert, playing in the desert, practicing, but he's never played in this tournament before. That makes me so curious. And he comes out here. A lot of guys come out here uh, in the winter months to work on their games, to get them sharp for whenever it is that they choose to start playing. Jason has always chosen to start playing at the uh, Farmers Insurance event at Torrey Pines in San Diego the following week. So apparently somebody this year slipped him a map and said, here's a way to get from the Vintage Club to PGA West. <laughs> and he's decided uh, that he is going to start his year here. Um, it does, it, it is kind of puzzling to say, well, you, you come here to play golf because the weather's great, the courses are great, the conditions are great. Well, here's a chance to do that and make some money, <laughs> you know? So, uh, uh, and what you hope is a guy like that will show up and, uh, and play well yeah. and say, hey, you know what? I can do this next year too. Uh, some guys, uh, you know, last year, a good example, Brooks Kepka um, had not played here. Uh, he did come and play. Uh, some people say it's because there was no pro-am last year. Some people say that didn't have anything to do with his decision to play. Um, he got off to a decent enough start. Uh, unfortunately, he missed the cut. Uh, and it's not back this year. Uh, so 
you would like to see a guy like Jason Day, uh, a guy like Justin Rose, right? Uh, come here, play well, make the cut. Ricky Fowler hadn't played here for a long time. Last couple of years he's played, made the cut. Tony Fino hadn't played here a long time. Last couple of years he's had a chance to win, actually. Um, and, and so you want to, if they if they play well here, they're more likely to come back here. One more on the names in the field. I mean, I think I already had my pick. And again, maybe it's lame to, to pick the chalk, but there's just, there seems to be no reason why John Rahm shouldn't win our tournament next week. As far as somebody else, I mean, look, Tony Finau was one of the first names. Uh, I've personally, if you go back through my Twitter feed over the years, I've probably ripped on Tony Finau a dozen times for never being able to close. Yeah. And he changed that last year. Uh, and of yes. course, he, he won a playoff event as well. He would be my my choice for the, the biggest chaser to Rom. There's somebody else that you got that uh, you think is going to give Rom a run? Well, uh, it's hard to get away from the idea that Patrick Cantlay is going to play yeah. well. He might not shoot 61 again, uh, but uh, I think, you know, this is the reigning PGA Tour player of the year. Uh, and I think he's certainly somebody who broke through last year. Three wins. Uh, could have been a fourth one here. Uh, that's a big year on the PGA Tour now. Uh, so he'd be somebody, but... I, you know, I would really be fascinated to see if maybe this is the year. I I'm, could a 51 year old guy <laughs> go to La Quinta on Thursday and shoot 63 and put himself into the into the mix all week. Um, you know, Phil Mickelson is not going to go to a lot of PGA Tour events these days and contend. He's great on a senior tour. He's great on certain events, and maybe he can muster up four great days at the PGA last year. But this is a golf course, a golf series of golf courses, it's a tournament you could play uh, and potentially win. But the guy I really am going to focus on early, I think, is Ricky Fowler. Okay. I think this could be the year that Ricky gets back into the winner's circle. It's been a tough couple of years for him. He showed some signs last year. And uh, like I said, you know, he's played decently here the last couple of years. Uh, I think he was 10th two years ago. I think he was 21st last year. Um, you could see him putting together a, a good run and then finding himself Sunday in the, in the mix and seeing if the old juices start to flow again. Friends, you're tuning into episode 44 of the Spicer Speaking Podcast, Larry Bohannon of the Desert Sun been doing it there since 1986 he is my guest we're getting you prepped and previewed for next week's return of the pga tour the 63rd annual american express a couple more for you today larry and again look forward to being out there with you next week uh, contributing to the newspaper's coverage i mean over the years that i've had the pleasure of watching you work watching how you cover tournament golf you've taught me you taught me a lot man about uh the right way to get out of to journalism. Cover. Say again. <laughs> Did I teach you to get out of journalism? You never taught me that valuable <laughs> oh, okay. lesson, but uh, no, you've taught me a lot of things about how and how not to cover tournament golf over the years. And uh, yeah, it, it's something, it's one of my favorite weeks and times of the yeah. year to, uh, to sit there by you and uh, some of the other fellas, but uh, just to see how you do it, to learn from you, to watch how you work, man. Uh, it's, uh, I had to learn that myself. I'm trusting the first <laughs> first year I covered this was 1987, and it was the year that the stadium course was first played, and nobody had taught me how to deal with angry players, and they were all angry that week. <laughs> well, we're looking at a forecast of ample sunshine, and uh, as you said, probably some super low scoring next week. So I trust we'll see some smiling faces outside yeah. of our own speaking of the desert sun and desert sun.com where you can follow all this coverage uh, by the time this episode comes out you will have a new piece in the paper i think the general listener will be particularly interested in this uh it's not particularly golfy however it does deal with attendance and some problems we saw a few years ago i can't remember which concert that was man was it the stevie nicks concert? it was the stevie nicks concert, concert the friday okay. night concert in 2020 and they had, they sold somewhere between 18 and 19,000 tickets that night. 
but they estimate that about 25,000 people showed up for the uh, concert because so many people drove into PGA West to see their friends at their homes and just wandered down without a ticket. And there were some major traffic traffic issues uh, trying problem. to get out. Uh, yeah. There were people who were uh, stuck in their car in a uh, in the main tournament parking lot for up to two hours. A couple hours. And I think that, uh, you know, the, uh, as Patrick uh, uh, McCabe, who's the executive director of the tournament, said the next day they started working on how to fix that. And then they didn't have to worry about it last year because there were no concerts because of COVID and there was and no, no pro-am and there were no fans. <laughs> um, but they do have a new plan this year. Uh, it involves not having just one exit out of the parking lot. It involves having three. It involves making sure that cars that drive into the residential area at PGA West cannot come back out onto PGA Boulevard, which is the extension of Jefferson into PGA West. They will have to go out Madison uh, exits. Um, and they're convinced that they will have much smoother flow of traffic uh, as people go directly onto Jefferson or directly out to 52nd through uh, the Silver Rock property or the Talus property, whatever they're calling that these days. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it will also, I think, um, I think it will also help that they, they're anticipating fewer people uh, simply because we are still in a COVID world and there are people who won't want to be in a large crowd, a couple of thousand people, 10,000, 12,000, 15, whatever, um, that people will be required to show proof of vaccination uh, or at least a negative test within 72 hours. Right. I think we saw at the BMP Paribas this year uh, in October, the tennis tournament, that uh, the requirement of a vaccination uh, a card, evidence of vaccination, cut down on the crowd. That's uh, one way to put it. So <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that'll be, uh, so I don't think they'll have 25,000 people out there. I still think they'll have pretty good crowds. Uh, it's Maroon 5 on Friday night and then uh, Brad Paisley on uh, Saturday night. So I still think they'll have good crowds, but I think that the plan will help to uh, alleviate uh, that traffic jam from two years ago. I'll kind of segue, lastly, a few things you just said. Yeah, the purchase of uh, any ticket, um, you gain access to the concerts. And as Larry said, it's Maroon 5 on Friday after play. And then Brad Paisley, Saturday after play. Both concerts take place at the PGA West driving range and have been big success in the past, save for the uh, traffic uh, snafu that we saw a couple of years ago. And uh, it's good to hear that they have a new plan because that traffic problem was legit. Uh, you also mentioned the BNP, and I kind of laughed at that because I think I either sent you a picture or I yeah. showed you a picture of attending the BNP. And I know I talked about it here in a few times about like total tumbleweeds. And there are a few reasons for that. I mean, it was in October and there's a lot of competition for other sports and this is not the peak season. But now we are in the peak season, and there is the timing of this event. There is not as much competition necessarily for sports, but I gather that, yeah, some of the lack of attendance at the tennis tournament in the fall was because of what you just said, um, a, a, a negative test within a, a few days or so of attending or entering the grounds or now proof of vaccination as well probably held for whatever people's reasons want to be. We're not going to get into that, but it probably did hold some people back. You mentioned Pat McCabe. Have you had any chats with Pat or do you have any sense of how they're doing for ticket sales, maybe because of those specific health and safety protocol reasons? I, you know, I think they accept the idea that they're not going to have as many people as they had two years ago. Uh, on the other hand, anybody, any ticket they sell this year is one more ticket than they sold last year. Yeah. Uh, so they're very happy to have that back. I think they're very happy to have the concerts. They think people will show up, but they do understand that uh, by requiring proof of vaccination or a negative test, 
there will be some people who will not want to not want to bother, frankly. Uh, as for the concerts, you know, again, if you have 15,000 people out there, there will be some people who will not be comfortable in that situation right now. Uh, I think the BMP was hurt by a couple of other things. There were travel restrictions at the time. That's True. very much a global uh, event in terms of the crowd that shows up. And you didn't see as much of that, I think, this year. Uh, I think they were also hurt by the fact that some of the big stars on on the men's side in particular, uh, did not show up for that tournament in October. There was no Djokovic, there was no uh, Nadal, no Nadal Federer, there was no Federer. Serena. You know, the list so, goes on for that deal. Yeah. So I think they were hurt by a lot of things. Uh, I think Pat McCabe and the people at the uh, uh, city of La Quinta and the people at the American Express are very excited about their, their, uh, their field. And think people will, will come out and, and support the tournament again, given a chance that they didn't have last year. So, but will they have 25,000 people at the concerts? Mm, I think that's asking a tremendous amount. Uh, well, but I think they'd be happy with 15. Ultimately, however many people go to the concerts, uh, however many tickets they sell, I know that you'll be there. I know that I'll be there. I know that we're both enthused, again, to bring it back to the beginning, both enthused to cover what looks to be a really, really compelling field. Should be a very interesting week, and especially weekend, as this thing comes down to the wire with a lot of birdies at the American Express this year. And you got to remember, this is going to be the first tournament since the 2020 American Express where we've had fans in the desert. We've played two a and inspirations, now the Chevron Championship, without fans. We played the American Express last year without fans. So the idea that we can get people back on the golf course watching the best players in the world play is an exciting thing. Look forward to being there and learning more from you at the 2022 Amex next week, my friend. Catch uh, Larry's coverage at the Desert Sun or yeah, DesertSun.com, but subscribe. Get a subscription to the newspaper. Uh, Thank you so much for the time, my man. I will see you out there on the grounds of PGA West and beyond next week. We'll see you then. Thanks, Larry.